In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how you can dynamically create webinar registration pages based on the outcome of a vote in Typeform. So maybe you've got some ideas for some upcoming webinars that you want to create, but you're not sure which one's gonna be the most popular. In this, we're gonna create a system where people can vote in Typeform, and depending on the outcome of that vote, it gets sent through to Airtable and then into Webflow to spin up the registration page. You're gonna need accounts for each, so one for Webflow, one for Airtable, one for Typeform, and probably about 20 to 25 minutes of your time. You will need some basic Webflow knowledge, so if you are just starting out with Webflow, maybe have a play around before you dive into this tutorial, but once you're ready, let's jump in. Having the ability to actually dynamically create and deploy a webinar registration pages based off of the input of current users or website visitors is extremely useful if you are involved in say like a marketing team or a product team and actually just want to test out what people are actually interested in. So to get this going we're going to need to do a little bit of setup here. Um, we're going to need a simple site within Webflow. Um, you can see here, dynamically create webinar registration pages. And this is a description of the tutorial. And this is our MakerWeb logo, nice and big. If you go into the CMS within Webflow, this is where the magic happens. So we have a CMS collection called webinars. And if you click this cog, this is how we set it up. So we have a name, a slug, a main image, registration link, a description, and a date. The collection name is webinars, and the collection URL is webinars also. So where Webflow really shines is every time we create an item within this CMS, that will then generate its own page. And the way we do this is by customizing this collection page here. It's called the CMS collection pages template. So if we select into this, this is the template that we've created for our webinars. See a nice picture of a hound here. Seems like a very happy boy. We have a webinar title, which is a placeholder, which is then mapped to our CMS. If you, if you click in a cog, for instance, like this one, Click the cog and you can see it's connected to get text from webinars and then to the name. The same with this one, it's connected to the date, this one to the description, this one is just text. And then we have a form here for people to actually be able to register. The same with this image, this image comes from the CMS also. Clicking the cog, we'll see it's mapped to the main image from within the CMS. If you want to actually get some more information on how you do this within Webflow, you can head over to the Webflow University. Uh, they have the best tutorials on how to create this sort of thing and how to work with the CMS within Webflow. So next, we're going to actually just need a way to capture some information from our users. For this, we've created a simple type form. And we've got four webinar ideas, building your first mobile app, creating a Webflow site, automating your work and email sequencing. We've also got a place to store the responses to here. Within Airtable, we've created a simple Airtable with two tables, webinar ideas and webinar votes. One is where we list our ideas and second is where we capture our responses to type form. So in our all webinars ideas table, I'm just going to input our names of the webinar. So building our first mobile app, I'm going to put these in exactly, creating a Webflow site, automating your work, and email sequencing. Okay. We have a description, which we're going to need to put into Webflow. We have a share image. Again, we're going to need that. I'm ready to publish within Webflow. We'll put some light on that in a second. A date, and then a vote count, which is a account field type. This is linked to our webinar, webinar votes table. 
and then our webinar votes which is our link between our two tables again if you want to know a bit more about how to link these two together dive into the webflow tutorials but also we have a bunch of tutorials on how to do that on makepad in our webinar votes table this is currently blank all it has is name email address and our webinar choice so if we have a look here we now have some choices so we need a way to actually connect these two together and for this use case we're going to use the creating a webflow site so we're going to fill in the description we have a share image ready to publish webflow date vote count okay so back over to Typeform now, we've published it, I'm going to go to the published version of our preview, and we're going to submit a vote for creating a Webflow site. Okay, that's been submitted, so we should have a result to actually use. Now we're going to get the two together by going over to Zapier and going to our dashboard. And we're going to actually create a brand new Zap. The first step of this is going to be Typeform. I'm going to connect this with Airtable. The trigger is going to be new entry. This one is going to be create record. And we're just going to use the zap that they've suggested. I'm going to rename this one to lesson new response webinar suggestion into Airtable okay I'm gonna choose our type form press continue test the trigger see if you can find our latest response great creating a webflow site if you're seeing information here which is correct press continue then you're going to be moved on to the Airtable step. Make sure it's Airtable and create record and press continue. Connect your Airtable account. Press continue again. Connect your base, which is going to be webinar ideas. Two seconds, let me just check which one we're using. Yep, webinar ideas. Choose your table. Which is going to be webinar votes. Okay, now we're going to map the name, select the field, and we're going to map our first name. If you wanted to go ahead and create the second name, all you'd have to do is go to your Airtable, add a new field, rename it, last name. Press save, back into Zapier and press refresh fields. There we go, now we have our last name available to us. This is a um, seeing on the right hand side here, an error coming from Zapier. This sometimes happens if you use a template, templated Zap from Zapier and then you actually misplace your base. Sometimes it will throw an error. Everything's okay, it will just keep popping up. Press your email address. And then map your webinar choice, which is going to be the response to the form. Which webinar would you like to host next? Now press continue. If you press test and continue, you should see a record or response sent over to our Airtable. Okay. So what we can see here is a couple of things. Firstly, I've spelled my email address wrong, which is good. And secondly, it's actually gone and created a choice for us. And because these are two linked together, and I've pulled in our choice from Typeform, it's input it in here, and it's also found this choice, and it's mapped the vote to the correct record. So you can see using the count field it's counted one vote 
and it's selected me. Let's do another vote. Go back into Typeform. Go back to the published version. And we're going to put another vote in for creating a Webflow site. I won't put Ben's email address, I'll just use mine again. Okay. Let's go back and test this first step to see if it's brought it in. Go into find data, click your entry, load more. We have a new entry, Ben Tossel. There we go. Retest your Airtable step. Back into Airtable. And now we have two votes for your Webflow site. So now we can do something clever. Let's actually push these results into Webflow to then create our page. But one thing we might want to do is actually have a bit of control over which webinars get created. So we're going to create a new view and we're going to do this based off of if a webinar gets three votes or more, that page then gets created. Really easy to do with an Airtable. Go to your view. I'm going to add a view, which is going to be another grid view. Because it's voted in, we're going to filter using the filter button, add a filter where the vote count is greater than or equal to two. Okay, so it's actually filtered out the other options and it's kept the ones which is the most popular, which is creating a Webflow site. We're going to create another view which is going to be ready to publish and we're going to filter this again where our vote count is greater than or equal to 2 and where the ready to publish in Webflow is checked with a tick. Okay, so just to recap we have all of our webinar ideas in here. Those that are voted more than twice get moved into this view and those that are voted more than twice and ready to go to Webflow gets put in this view. Okay, the reason I've done that control is because what we can do now we have this we can actually add in some more information before we put it into Webflow. It could be adding a description, it could be adding your share image which we'll do now. You might want to add a date and once you've got all that we've got all the information we need to actually create our landing page. But before we push this check button let's actually create the next step in our Zap which is the step to push to our Webflow site. Back into Zapier We can actually switch this one on. I'm going to go back, see if we can get rid of this error. Okay, let's just about this wrong as well. And we're going to add another step. So this is going to be a multi step zap. Multi step is actually a premium feature within Zapier. So if you need to create two zaps to do this, then you can. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's create two zaps. So go back into Zapier. We're going to make a new zap. This is going to be Airtable is our first step. Select new record in view as our trigger. Remember, because we have different views, so when a new record reaches a view, we use that as our trigger rather than just the new record. We're going to connect our Airtable base, connect our table, which is webinar ideas, and then connect our view, which is going to be ready to publish. Pressing continue and I'll move on to our next step. But before that, if we test our trigger, it will notice that there's no record to be found. So we've got no data to use. 
hop back into Airtable and then check this box, ready to publish in Webflow, which should move it into our ready to publish view. Brilliant. And now we can use it in our Zap. Great. Press continue now. And for our next step, we're going to connect Webflow. Our action event is going to be create live item. Press continue. Connect your Webflow account. Choose your site. Choose your collection. As soon as you press your collection, you should have a pop up which shows all your CMS items. Remember, they are here. They should match. Here we go. Name, slug, main image, registration, link, description, and date. Here they are here. Main image is going to be full URL. Registration link, we're going to leave blank, but it's an option if you wanted to actually customize it to move to an external page. Our description is fairly self explanatory. Date. Name. Slug, we're going to leave blank. Archive, we're going to set to false. And draft, set to false. Press continue. And if you're happy with the information that you've got, all looks correct, press test and continue. Okay, so we're actually throwing an error here. So we're saying the collection structure has changed since our last publish. So let's go back into Webflow and let's republish the site. And let's try that again. Cool. Now we have a green tick. Way to check this is by heading into our Webflow CMS. It's not there now, but if we give it a refresh, with a bit of luck, it'll be there. We have two items, a Webflow site item. If you want to check the page, you select your webinars template. At the top here, you can change the item which you see and select creating a web flow site. There we go. So this will actually be, if you've cr chosen create a live item, this will go immediately onto your site. So just to recap, from type form, you can send out a published type form to see what your community want to see next from you. This will then be sent into a webinar votes. You have a list of your webinar ideas in your all webinars ideas air table. Once the vote count threshold gets reached, it gets put into voted in where you can populate the rest of the info you need. And once you push ready to publish the web flow, it gets ready to publish in this line here, which then triggers our zap new record in view in air table create live item in Webflow. If you go to our site quickly, there we go. We now have a live registration page. It's not the prettiest, but it will work where people can actually register for the dynamically created webinar based off of what everyone voted for. Hope this was useful. Look forward to seeing how you use it. And if you have any questions, reach out and let me know how you get on. See you later. Bye.